Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Praise the name of the Lord for a snow day in Texas. Praise the Lord. It reminds me of when I was serving in the United States Army, and um, my first uh, station was Louisville, Kentucky, and it was extremely cold in Louisville, and then I, I was shipped off to New Jersey to the Fort Monmouth um, post there, the United States Army Chaplain Center and School, and there was four foot of snow on the ground uh, when I landed there in Jersey, and it stayed on the ground for about two weeks. And so this is nothing compared to that, but we are certainly thankful and praising the Lord. This is still the day that the Lord has made, and we are going to rejoice and be glad in it, even though we're in a a social media environment, Zoom and Facebook Live, is still the day that the Lord has made. And so we want you to rejoice, even though we're on Zoom today. It's time to shout, give God a praise, uh, and declare that he is Lord in our lives. And so we thank God and praise God to see all of your wonderful faces. And it's good for the pastor because typically I don't see your faces on Sunday. I just look at a camera. And I can't really see anybody, but today I can see your faces on the screen. And we want to say happy Valentine's Day to everybody uh, today, both female and male. We like Valentine's as well. And so we just thank God and praise God for every everybody. This is a day to share love, to show love. Love is an action word. And so you can't love unless you do something in action about it. And so we thank God and praise God for all of you. And so we're going to pray this morning as we continue to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And let me thank God for um, the praise team sharing virtually with us. I see uh, Reverend Perry is here in the screen this morning. We thank God and praise God for him. Kingston is here. So it's just like they're on the organ and the drums <laughs> because they are here in the Zoom room uh, with us. And so we thank God for uh, both of them. And so as we prepare to pray this morning, uh, won't you just uh, center yourselves and get your mind in a place of praise and adoration and worship, uh, meditation unto the Lord as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning for who you are and for what you're doing, even in the midst of a Zoom room experience, a Facebook live experience. This is still the day. And we thank you, Lord, for this day, a day that we've never seen before, God. We love you. We praise you, God. On this day, happy Valentine's Day, God. This is love day. You were the one who originated the word love. Uh, and we thank you, Lord, for the love that you have shown toward all of us this morning. You died. You gave your only begotten son to die on a cross for our sins. And on the third day, he got up out of the grave, proclaiming all power is in my hands. Lord, we thank you this morning for every person that's populating in the Zoom room. Uh, and Lord, this is not just a Zoom room. It's a prayer room. It's a war room, God. It's a praise room. It's a worship. It's a sanctuary experience because uh, anywhere we are becomes a sanctuary when we give your name praise because your word declares that you inhabit the praises of your people. And so, Lord, we thank you this morning. Thank you for our tech team this morning, Lord. They are always working hard. We thank you for uh, Takia. We thank you for Tanisha. We thank you for Isha. We thank you for all of the persons who are gathered this morning, Lord. We lift up the Washington family, Lord, as they prepare this week to, to lay our sister to rest, Sister Beverly Washington, in a homegoing celebration on Wednesday, Lord. We pray that the roads will be clear enough for us to go and do what is necessary to give honor and to praise your name for the life and the legacy of Sister Washington, to comfort the family, Brother Joe and, and all of the other family members, the children. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for, for who you are and what you are continually doing, Lord. We continue to lift up Brother Strong and Reverend Finch and others who perhaps are in some kind of place of, 
of illness or recuperation or recovery process, Lord. We ask, oh God, that you would give us the strength this morning to continue to press through this pandemic, Lord. We are almost a year in, God, but continuing to press forward and walk by faith and not by sight. We believe, God, that you're able to do all things exceedingly well. Those who are not feeling well this morning, we pray that you would strengthen them. We pray that you would heal them right now by the power of your might. And we believe this morning, God, that you can do all things exceedingly well. We praise your name for the Morning Chapel Church family, all of the members of this wonderful church, all of our Facebook Friends, God, we thank you, Lord, for all of them who are populating via live on Facebook. And this morning, Lord, we pray for a miracle right now in the name of Jesus that you would shift the atmosphere and make it be about you. You are the main attraction in this place. In the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord and praise the Lord and the scripture. Uh, reading for this morning is Mark, uh, the New Testament gospel, Mark, St. Mark. Some of you may say St. Mark, but Mark, uh, one of the synoptic gospels, uh, Mark chapter 9, beginning at verse number 2, uh, reading. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up on a mountain, a high mountain, where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could reach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. And as they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Praise be the name of the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearers of his word. And we thank God and praise God for all of you. And this is, of course, our Black History Month celebration. And of course, Black History Month, we always have an awesome celebration, and we're not going to be uh, hindered today by um, what, what's on the outside. We thank God for those of you who are uh, in the Zoom room with us. And so one of our young people, uh, Ja'Kayla, is coming forward, uh, Ja'Kayla Dangerfield, who does, who's a scholar in her own right. And we thank God and praise God for all of our young people, and she's going to come now and share with us in her own way in this Black History moment. God bless you, Jacqueline. Good morning, officers and members of Morning Chapel. I am Kamala Harris, the first female African-American and Asian Vice President of the United States of America. And I am delighted that you invited me to your worship service this morning. I know you've heard a lot about me during the 2020 presidential election. And I am so thankful for all of the support and prayers you sent up for me while I was campaigning for the election. I am so proud. I'm, I am a proud graduate of Howard University located in Washington, DC, where I received my undergrad degree in economics and political science. There I also became a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. 
I then went on to the University of California and received my law degree. I am hired as the de district attorney in Alameda County, California, and later served as an assistant San Francisco district attorney. In 2002, after going through many issues defending juveniles' rights to have a fair trial and fighting for rights of all, I ran for district attorney of San Francisco and won becoming the first person of color to serve a DA in that city. I served for two terms as the district attorney of the state of California and fought for privacy rights, LGBT rights, and public safety. I fought against several wrongful convictions. In 2016, I, I was elected to serve in the US Senate representing California. I am appointed to the Senate Judiciary Committee. And let me tell you, I fought against everything Trump was trying to push illegally. In June 2018, I decided to make a run for President of the United States because I knew that this country would not survive if Trump remained in office. As you all know, I withdrew due to not enough support to continue. However, I was contacted by Joe Biden to be his vice president, and the rest is history. I continue to fight for fair and equal rights and privileges of all Americans, no matter race, religion, or sexual orientation. But before I leave, I want you to know that I grew up worshiping in a Black church, and I even sung in the children's choir. I love the Lord, put my husband, stepkids, and family first because I'm their mama love. Again, thank you so much for allowing me to be here at the historical Morning Chapel CME Church. May God bless you all.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, praise team. And uh, thank you, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, for joining us this morning in our worship experience. And I saw you had one of your Secret Service agents with you, but that's, all, that's the only one you needed because he was serious. Looks like he was ready to take care of some business if anything jumped off. And so we thank God for you bringing him along with you. And I'm just going to put this out in the air. Uh, we, we got to get the, the, the other Vice President Kamala Harris to come downtown Fort Worth to the Rock Church at some point in time because she needs to meet you. Amen. <laughs> she needs to meet you and you need to meet her. And we thank God for you this morning sharing in this wonderful worship experience. So morning chapel. All right. All right, all right. Well, we're back in and we praise the Lord and thank God for his power. Can you all hear me? Just want to know if you can hear me. Yeah, because yes, you know, it's technology, it's something else now. It's not like being in person. So if you don't say anything, I'll just be talking and I won't know anything that's going on. But we thank God and praise the Lord for, for you this morning. I want you to turn with me um, to the book of first uh, first. Corinthians chapter 13 is where we will journey today. First Corinthians chapter 13 is the love chapter beginning at verse number one uh, for our hearing. And it reads thusly, if you find it in your Bible or in your Bible app, love is indispensable. And, and yet I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but I do not have love, I am only a sounding gong or a clinging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith, that can move mountains, but do not have love. I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to, to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It does not it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. 
It is not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there's knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when completeness is come, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things or I put childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Praise the name of the Lord. We thank God and praise the Lord this morning. Our Father and our God, we thank you this morning. We, we lift up your name now as we prepare to preach your word, God. We pray that you would move me out of the way so that the real preacher will stand up in this place. We thank you. We praise you. Saturate the atmosphere now, even this Zoom room and Facebook live experience. We pray that you would pour out your anointing even now. We thank you, Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be all acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so thank you very much. God bless all of you again this morning. You can like the video and share it and make some comments uh, in the chat room and also on uh, Facebook Live. Please chat so that it will travel and you can do your part by evangelizing and witnessing. But today, just for a few moments, we want to uh, share from the subject, love lifted me. Love lifted me. I was reading an article earlier this week from one of my uh, favorite life coaches and therapists, uh, Ayanna Van Zant. And she said it like this. She said, love is simple. We make love hard with all of our trappings and all of our expectations and demands. And then I, then I reflected upon what, what Tina Turner said, uh, Reverend Perry, you, you know her, don't you? And she was married to Ike and Tina penned this song, what's love got to, to do with it? And God's love for us is personal. He loves us in a, sunk, a personal kind of way and to understand how important love is to God. We need to only look at the biblical context because uh, the Old Testament uh, mentions the word love uh, 250 times. Uh, the New Testament mentions the word love 234 times. Uh, 72 of those times that love is mentioned uh, is found in John's gospel. And we know about John because John 3.16 uh, says, for God so loved what? The world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And so the world now uh, uh, rewards conformity. That's what the world does. But and, and punishes those who dare to be different. But now Jesus has another kind of narrative on this because uh, he seems to say to us uh, that in a wicked world, in an unloving world, in an unforgiving uh, world, in a treacherous world, uh, the most radical thing that one can do is love uh, because love changes uh, everything. Uh, matter of fact, he suggests to us the, that if we love, uh, love conquers a multitude of sins. And we learn the principles of love uh, throughout the New Testament and the Old Testament. One of the greatest principles I, I love so well was in John chapter 12, verses 
1 through 8, uh, where we can see the principle at work when Mary broke uh, an expensive jar of ointment uh, and poured it on uh, Jesus' feet. Uh, disgusted by this uh, extravagant gesture, uh, Judah said to, uh, that, to, to say to them that the ointment uh, could have been sold, uh, but, but Jesus uh, said that this was a uh, radical love. Uh, this is the kind of uh, demonstration that the Lord makes uh, throughout the biblical text that Christ's uh, love compels us. Uh, and uh, when we love, we are always going to have some critics because uh, our critics may not understand the depth of our love. Uh, our critics may not understand the origin of uh, our love, uh, but the love of the Lord uh, is what we're talking about this, this morning because uh, one man died uh, because he loved us. Uh, he died in my place. He died uh, in your place. Uh, he died because uh, his death was personal. Uh, his death is real. Uh, his death is sacrificial. Uh, his death is complete. Uh, and it is complete because uh, he loves us uh, so much. Uh, what kind of love is this kind of uh, love that Jesus uh, has for us? And so Paul uh, talks about this kind of love in the in the 13th chapter of first Corinthians uh, and he says it like this let me show you a more excellent way yeah, I know you're kind of looking funny but I'm going somewhere he said let me show you a more excellent way and then he turns around uh, and says that the greatest of these uh, the most essential gift uh, that God gave the church uh, the gift that contains uh, the most divine power rather than any other kind of power is the power Power of love. And when you possess this kinds of love, the love of God is working in you. But not only is the love of God working in you, the love of God is working through you. One of the problems in the church at Corinth was that they were manifesting nearly every spiritual gift uh, in existence, uh, but they were not walking in love uh, toward one another. I wish I could get some help up in here, up in here. Uh, a lot of us are gifted, uh, but, but moreover, you've got to be more than gifted. Uh, you've got to love people. Uh, what good is it for you to display all of your excellent gifts, uh, but do not have love? Uh, and so the Corinthian church, uh, they were flashy with their gifts. Uh, they love speaking in tongues and prophesying uh, and the other gifts of the spirit uh, to look spiritual in the eyes of others. Uh, and so Paul had to call them out on it. Uh, he said, I see a lot of gifts. Uh, I see a lot of prophecy. I see a lot of speaking in tongues, uh, but some of y'all don't even speak in English. Uh, and so if you're going to speak in tongues, uh, please, my brother, please, my sister, come out of the clouds uh, and speak to me uh, eye to eye and face uh, to uh, face. Uh, and so it is here that we talk about uh, the church at Corinth uh, and how they were having uh, all kinds of uh, problems uh, in this particular church because uh, the spiritual gifts and the usage uh, of the spiritual gifts uh, in the church. Uh, and yes, while those gifts uh, were beneficial uh, to the church, uh, the Lord seemed to suggest uh, through the life uh, of Paul the Apostle. Uh, he said, what is the greatest gift? Uh, what's the greatest gift uh, that one can uh, possess? Uh, and he seemed to say here in the 13th chapter of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 uh, that the greatest gift uh, is love, uh, is love, is love. That, that, that's the greatest uh, gift. Uh, what matters most uh, is not whether or not you possess uh, a flashy gift. Uh, what matters most uh, is not how smart you are, uh, how academic you are, uh, what school you graduated from, uh, your intellect, uh, all of your wonderful accolades and uh, uh, parchments that are displayed uh, on your wall uh, because people do not care 
how much you know uh, if they don't see how much you care. Uh, and so people have to understand uh, that beyond your, uh, your knowledge, uh, beyond your intellect, uh, beyond your academy learning, uh, they must understand uh, that you love them. Uh, how many of you on this uh, Zoom uh, this morning uh, actually love uh, somebody? Well, I'm going to give you a test in just a few minutes uh, because if you say you love me, uh, You've got to do something uh, about the love. Uh, a lot of us just like to do word uh, or lip love. Uh, we say, I love you, but there's no follow through. Uh, there's no action uh, because if you love me, uh, there's going to be some uh, action. Uh, so what matters is not uh, how wealthy you are how popular you are, right? how famous you are, right? how well liked you are on Facebook, uh, on Instagram, uh, on all of the other social media outlets. Uh, it does not matter how liked uh, you are. Right? What matters uh, is how you uh, love. Uh, that's what matters. Uh, and so Jesus teaches us that uh, we've got to learn about love, uh, learn how uh, to love people because uh, love has a uh, distinction. Love has a distinction. The whole idea of love is, uh, is superior in everything uh, love does. Uh, if love is not infused, uh, then it's not God uh, because God is uh, love. Uh, and it's a colossal waste of time when uh, you're doing a whole lot of stuff, uh, but uh, you don't love. Now, I don't know. I can only talk about myself uh, in this regard. Uh, some of y'all will not admit the fact uh, that you tried to buy you some love. Uh, you tried to purchase uh, some love. Yeah, that don't feel good, does it? Uh, because you're going to discover that uh, you cannot buy love uh, because uh, while it might feel good for a moment, uh, you're going to find out that the person you're trying to buy the love from uh, does not love you. Uh, they just love what you do. Uh, they just love the stuff uh, that you keep on giving. Uh, and my mother used to say, don't be a fool for nobody. Uh, so here we are in the context uh, of love. Uh, love is higher than your sensations. Uh, the high is higher. You can be a great uh, speaker, yes, but there's no substitute uh, for love. Uh, you've got to love people. And then what, what Paul uh, uh, references here is a metaphor called a uh, clinging symbol. Uh, he said a lot of folk are loud, uh, but they don't love. Uh, a lot of folks sound like tinkling brass uh, and a clinging uh, symbol. Uh, you loud, uh, you got the L-O right, uh, but you don't love. Uh, L-O-V-E, uh, not L-O-U-D, uh, but L-O-V-E. Uh, you've got to love uh, somebody. Yeah. And so now we see that the greatest uh, orators in the world uh, can move a person's uh, emotions. Uh, great rhetoric can move uh, a person's mind. Uh, great speeches uh, can uh, somehow move a person's uh, will. Uh, but the only thing that can move somebody's heart, uh, the only thing that can move a heart uh, is love. Uh, you've got to display uh, love uh, towards somebody. Uh, those persons who are great orators uh, can move you to tears, uh, but only love uh, can move you to Jesus. Uh, only love uh, can move somebody's heart. Uh, while you're trying to buy love, uh, while you're trying to impress people, uh, don't impress them uh, with your exterior, impress them with your interior. Show me that you love me. Do something. Every now and then, you can keep on telling me you love me. Some people have told me they love me for years, but they've never shown it. They've never acted it out because we've become so custom to just using the word loosely. I love you and I love you and I love you, but a love that does nothing uh, it's really not love uh, if you don't do anything about uh, what you say because love is higher than the spectacular. That's what Paul said. Uh, love is higher than the sacrificial. Uh, love has a clear distinction uh, about it. That's why I said love uh, 
lifted me. Now, now let me tell you what Paul says about, about this love. And I'm going to get out of your way. But he, he says it here. I, I get kind of excited when I talk about this because uh, I understand what Paul uh, is showing us from uh, all the sides of a God uh, he loves. Uh, he says here in verse number four, look at it with me, if you will, in verse four, first uh, Corinthians chapter 13, uh, he says, uh, love uh, suffereth long. Uh, y'all not with me now. Y'all, somebody, somebody just checked out. Love suffereth long. That means uh, patiently enduring uh, under provocation. Uh, that means I've got to display some uh, patience, uh, learning how to be long-tempered, uh, learning how to, to wait on the Lord uh, without showing any signs of uh, retaliation, uh, because a lot of us have uh, retaliation inside of us. Uh, somebody got that, uh, I, I wish somebody would uh, say something to me, uh, but now uh, if you really got love, uh, he said, you're going to be patient, uh, you're going to be long uh, Tempered. Uh, and then, then wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Uh, now, now I, I, my God, today, he's saying here, he said, love is kind. Uh, my God, it, it's just, let me, t let me say what my, what my grandmother said. Uh, she said, it's just nice to be nice. That's what she said. It's nice uh, to be nice. Uh, kindness is uh, active goodness. Uh, it means I'm a, I do it intentionally. Yeah. I'm just nice, uh, not because I'm weak, uh, not because I'm frail, not because I'm shallow. Uh, I'm nice uh, because the Lord has been nice to me. Yeah. The Lord has been uh, kind to me. Yeah. And so God has been uh, kind uh, to you. Uh, you ought to be kind to somebody else. Uh, if the Lord has shown you mercy, yeah, why in the world can't you show somebody else some mercy. Uh, if the Lord has forgiven you, uh, why can't you forgive uh, somebody else? Uh, if the Lord uh, has somehow loved you uh, in spite of who you are, uh, why in the world can't you uh, love somebody uh, in spite uh, of who they are? Uh, but then he says something else about love. Uh, not only that love is kind, he says love is not jealous. I, I, whoo I wish I could, my, did, I, did I come across to the people in the balcony? He said, love is not jealous, uh, jealous about your abilities, jealous about your successes, uh, jealous about your possessions. Uh, love is not jealous. Uh, no, love wants you to prosper. Bro. If I love you, I want you to prosper. Bro. I want you to do good. Uh, spare me from uh, being around a bunch of uh, a bunch of haters, uh, a bunch of people who are trying to oppress me, uh, a bunch of people who are trying to keep their foot uh, on my neck, uh, or like George Floyd, uh, keep the knee uh, on my neck. Uh, and so it is uh, that love is not uh, jealous. Uh, and so I love to celebrate you. Uh, I love when you're prospering. Uh, I love when you do good uh, because I love you. Uh, and I know God loves you. Uh, and so because God loves you, uh, he wants you to prosper. Uh, he wants you uh, to do good. Uh, jealousy is one of the vilest sins. Uh, one of the vilest sins that we harbor in our hearts uh, is jealousy. Uh, it's Eve's jealousy of God that motivated her, motivated her to take the forbidden fruit. fruit. Uh, it was jealousy that put uh, Daniel in the lion's den. Uh, it was jealousy that put uh, Joseph in a pit. Uh, it was uh, jealousy uh, that did all of those things. Uh, and then, then I want to say something else about this. Corinthian church, uh, Paul said, love is not puffed up. Y'all not with me? You can write that down. It's right there in the scripture. Love is not puffed up. Uh, it's not arrogant. It's not proud. Uh, it realizes that all it has, uh, no matter how great your talents are, let me help somebody right here. If you don't have love, uh, you won't make it very far. No matter how spectacular your gifts are, and I've met a whole lot of spectacular people in my life. Uh, but I've also met some spectacular people who were gifted but loveless. Uh, they didn't have any love uh, in their hearts. Uh, and so it is here that, that the, love, the love that Paul is talking about, he's, he's talking about does not behave itself uh, unseemly. Y'all not with me? Love, in other words, love is not rude. 
Let me put a pen right there. I, let me turn around on that one right there. Love is not root. Love always treats people with compassion. Love always con treats people with uh, consideration. Love always treats people with respect. Uh, love controls uh, the emotions. Uh, it's not, uh, it is not friendly one day and rude the next day. Yeah, that's kind of schizophrenic, isn't it? Uh, you treat me nice one day and the next day you act like you don't know me. Yeah, you treat me kind one day. Yeah. And the next day you act like you hate my guts. Uh, well, genuine love always uh, makes Jesus look good. Uh, Y'all not with me right there. Bro. So love ever gives, uh, forgives, outlives, uh, and ever stands with open hands. Uh, and while it lives, it gives. Uh, while love lives, uh, it gives. Uh, for this is love's prerogative is to, to give. Uh, to give, uh, to give uh, is what love wants to do. Uh, and then finally, he says, love is not uh, easily provoked uh, because true love, uh, watch this, uh, keeps no records of wrong. Okay, wait a minute. I know you got your black book. I know you got your journal out where you keeping a record of everybody that has done uh, wrongs to you. And uh, every time you get a chance, you check your book out uh, and you go back and you up to about 2,920 folks uh, that have done you wrong. Uh, and you, you recorded all of the wrong uh, that they did uh, to you. Well, but the Lord says here through the life of Paul, uh, you need to throw that book away. Yeah. Throw away the book uh, that you're keeping records of everybody's wrongs uh, because just uh, remember this. Uh, maybe if the Lord uh, kept a book uh, of all of your wrongs. Okay, okay. Did I get you? Did I get you? Maybe the Lord, maybe he keeping a book of all of your wrongs. Uh, and so he said, throw that book away. Uh, throw the book away uh, because love uh, endures uh, all things. Uh, that's what I'm saying, my brothers and sisters. Uh, and so let me close here uh, by telling you just a few factors uh, about love. Uh, just a few factors about love. Uh, I believe it's in Romans, the 12th chapter, moving away from what 1 Corinthians said about it in the, in the 13th chapter, but Romans picks it up again in the life of Paul. And Paul says that love must be genuine now. It's a genuine thing. Love doesn't have any hypocritical tendencies uh, because love is uh, real. Uh, love uh, is discerning. That's what he says. Uh, Abhor what is evil. Uh, hold fast uh, to uh, what is good. Uh, not every relationship is a good relationship. Uh, not every choice is a good choice. Uh, not every friendship uh, is good for us. Uh, not every job is a wise career move. Uh, not every roommate uh, is a healthy choice. Uh, not every purchase uh, is as is wise, uh, is a wise use uh, of money here uh, because love uh, cannot be blind. Uh, love has to have a clear vision. Now, our love has to have discernment. Uh, it has to know how we're entering relationships. Uh, it has to know uh, who we're entering our relationships uh, with uh, because love is uh, supreme. Uh, it's never enough. Uh, and then finally, yeah, Romans chapter 12 uh, says love must display tender affection. Now, Love must have uh, this kind of philos, uh, this kind of brotherly and sisterly love, uh, affection, fondness, uh, and uh, devotion. Now, and so when we get together, right, when we come together, there ought to be some uh, affection. Uh, there ought to be some fondness. Uh, there ought to be some sense uh, that you really love me. You really care about me about me. Yeah, there ought to be something uh, on the inside of you uh, that oozes out uh, and says, I really love you. Uh, I really care about you uh, because love uh, 
is sacrificial. Y'all not with me? Uh, love is sacrificial. Uh, love doesn't mind uh, paying a price. Uh, love doesn't mind uh, going the extra mile. Uh, love doesn't mind uh, if you give me, uh, if you ask me for my coat, uh, I'll give you my cloak as well uh, because that's what love uh, is all about. Uh, oh, morning chapel, I want you to be enthusiastic uh, about your love, uh, not just on February the 14th, uh, because that's a commercialized day. Uh, I'm talking about every day, uh, 365 days a year, uh, 52 weeks uh, out of a year. Uh, love uh, ought to be uh, your victory song. Uh, love yeah. uh, ought to be the song that you sing uh, from your heart. Uh, why you say that, Pastor? Because if it had not been for the Lord uh, who was on your side, uh, who was on my side, uh, where in the world uh, would I be? Uh, well, I looked up the hymn uh, by Howard E. Smith. Uh, Howard E. Smith says, uh, I was sinking uh, deep in sin, uh, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained uh, within. Uh, sinking uh, to rise uh, no more. But the master, did y'all hear me? Uh, but the master of the sea uh, heard my despairing cry uh, from the waters. He lifted me. Uh, now safe uh, am I. And then the chorus says this. Uh, watch this, Sister Angel. The chorus said, love uh, lifted me. Love uh, lifted me here yeah, when nothing else could help. Uh, did y'all did y'all get that? When nothing else could help me, yeah, when nobody else could help me, love uh, reached down uh, and helped me. Yeah. But then I like what he said in the second stanza. He said, "All my heart uh, to him I give, uh, ever to him uh, I'll cling. Uh, I'm his blessed." presence live, uh, in his blessed presence live, uh, ever praising, uh, praise the singer, love so mighty uh, and so true, uh, merits my soul's uh, best songs, uh, faithful, loving, uh, service to, uh, to him belongs, uh, and then he said, love uh, lifted me, uh, when nothing else could help, uh, love uh, lifted me. I don't know about you this morning, morning chapel, but love ought to lift you. Love ought to lift you. Love ought to inspire. Love ought to make you shout. Love ought to make you dance sometimes. Love ought to make you wave your hands in the air. Wave them like you just don't care because of love is what God has done for you. It was God's love it was God's amazing love that saved you. It was God's amazing love that saved me. It's God's amazing love that washed my sins away and washed your sins away. It was God's amazing love that helped me when I could not help myself, that sustained me through some difficult times in my life. It was God's love. God's love, God's love that picked me up. I tell you today, my brothers and my sisters, it's God's love that continually keeps us. His love keeps you. I know that we've all been going through some difficult places, especially over the next, the last, what, 11 months. But it's been God's love that has kept you. God's love has kept me, and God loves you in spite of how you feel about it. It's God's love, so sacrificial, so kind. God keeps springing into action, leaping into action for you, leaping into intervening on your behalf. You may not tell anybody, but I know what God is doing. He's doing something for you. You may not acknowledge it. You may not ever tell anybody that, that God is really doing a whole lot of marvelous things uh, for me, but you ought to tell it. You ought to tell somebody it's God. Uh, when they ask you how in the world are you making it, you ought to say it's God. It's God. I, I, can't, I can't take any credit for this. this. This is God covering your family, covering your friends, 
covering your loved ones, uh, covering you, uh, blessing your going out, blessing your going in. It's God. Love lifted me. You ought to let love lift you today. Let love lift you. God bless you, my brothers and my sisters. We, we pray that God, that you will allow God to intervene and to do some marvelous things in your life. And um, we pray that you would give as God has blessed you to give. This is your opportunity to give, um, even on a Zoom, in a Zoom room, on Facebook Live, like we do every week. And we invite you to the Easy Tithe app, and we ask you to give. And I think uh, the stewards asked last month that you would give even the more, that you would give additional uh, offerings or a, a sow a seed uh, offering into the Lord and into the kingdom of the Lord. And the, and the word of God says that though, if you sow in good ground, you're going to reap a harvest. And we believe that this is good ground that you are sowing into. And so if you sow into good ground, you're going to reap a harvest. That's the word of God. That's a kingdom principle. Anytime you sow into good ground, you're going to reap that harvest. And so sow now. Sow. Sow your tithes and your offerings into good ground. Praise the name of the Lord. Remember all of um, the things that we have going forth uh, this week. We're still on, um, on Zoom Bible study uh, on Tuesdays at 12 noon. And of course, Wednesday evening, we're on Facebook Live Bible study. Um, of course, uh, we're in, under an inclement weather advisory by the National Weather Service. And so uh, the services for Beverly Washington, as of now, is going forth. And if there are any changes in it, we'll be sure to let you know. But up to this point, Wednesday at 11 o'clock, we'll be at the Baker, Chap the Baker Funeral Home, Baker Funeral Home in Fort Worth, Texas. And of course, we'll do the interment at the DFW National cemetery in uh, Dallas, Texas. So we want you to take note of that, continue to pray for the Beverly Washington family. And we praise the Lord and thank God for her service. If you have not uh, taken your, your COVID vaccination, we encourage you to do so. And some many of you have already taken the vaccination. I've seen you posting it on uh, social media. And some of you may be still sitting on the fence and you haven't decided whether or not you're going to, we can't make you do it, but we can certainly encourage you to do it because this is the only way that we see that we are going to get back to some sense of new normalcy beyond this. I, I know that we're, ever, we're never gonna be like we were before, but we want to get back to some sense or get to a place of new normalcy. And one of the ways that we can do that is to take the vaccine, take the vaccine. Now we are registered and we're just waiting on the call or the alert to go and receive our vaccinations, our whole house, uh, Tanisha, Kingston, and myself. We're all going to be vaccinated. And I know over the next couple of weeks because it's been a, at least a couple of weeks since we've been registered now and we all have our ID, ID number. So uh, once you do that for us, continue to pray for those who are sick, those who are shut in, in Morning Chapel and also our community. God bless you is our prayer. And we pray that you will have a blessed, continued Valentine day to day. Love is action. Remember that. Love is action. So do something. Do something today. If it's nothing but a text message, a text message, an email, send a virtual flower. You can do that. If you can't send any live, well, send a virtual flower a virtual heart, and let somebody know that you care about them. Won't you do that? I just want to encourage you to do that. My brothers and my sisters, we love you today, and we thank God for all of you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Give you peace, both now, henceforth, and forever and evermore. God bless you is our prayer. We love you. Happy Valentine's Day. God bless. Great word, Pastor. God bless you.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Great work, Pastor. Love you all. Have a great day. Love you.